Next, let's talk about how to read and interpret engineering drawings by looking at typical structure of then engineering design and the types of design documentation you'll be using. The different types of design documentation you'll be using include drawings, specifications, schedules, reports, and if you're working on a modern construction project, digital models. So things like BIM and 3D models of a structure. Drawings are used to provide detailed information about what we have to build. So if you've ever heard the saying, a picture tells a thousand words, then that definitely applies on a construction project. There is no way to describe a bridge, a road without a drawing. If it, it would be pages and pages of information, it would be so open to interpretation. So architectural and engineering drawings are used to explain exactly what needs to be built. Drawings show lots of different information. They show different layouts, geometry, how things connect together, and different detailed sections. And overall, the drawings should show us, as construction managers, exactly what we need to be building. And not all drawings are the same. There's lots of different types of drawings we'll be referring to on a construction project. There's title pages, there's general notes, there's layout and plan views, there's section views, there's schematics and symbols, there's schedules, and then there's project specific requirements. And we need to be able to understand all of these different drawings and how they work together to paint a complete picture of a project and what we're gonna be building. So the first thing to note when looking at a set of engineering drawings is the title block. The title block tells you who created the drawing, what the drawing is, the date the drawing was created, the stage of the drawing, so whether it's a 30% design, 70% design, 95% design or IFC, and then also the type of drawing and the drawing reference number. All this information is found on the title block. Then we've got our cover sheet. So a cover sheet is generally the title of the project and maybe an overall schematic view. And these drawings are often quite helpful to look at to understand the overall orientation of the project and how everything comes together. And often, whether it's on the title block or the page after, you're, you get a drawing register on a design package. So this is a list of all the separate drawings in the design package with the drawing reference number. It's like a table of contents in a book. So that's another really useful thing to look at when you're first looking at a design package. Then we've got our general notes. So general notes are like a set of applicable notes that apply to every drawing. So say you're looking at a structural design package, the general notes will say things like what type of concrete's used, minimum cover to have on concrete structures, and they basically provide additional detail that would be monotonous, that'd be too much to put on every single drawing patch. For example, if you need 50 mil cover on all the reinforcement, they wouldn't say that on every single drawing, they just say that in the general notes. So it's always a good, when you first look at a design package, to look through and understand what's in the general notes, because there'll be lots of little specifics to a project that get captured and summarized in the general notes. The next drawing type we need to understand is the layout or plan view. So the layout or plan view is an aerial view of the project. And typically you also have north, south or east, west grid lines which show how the project's broken up. And so the layout or plan view is a really good way to understand where everything is. So if you're looking at a building, it'll show you each room, the walls, the orientation. Or if it's a road project, it'll show you the orientation of the road, where the intersections are, where the turns are, those sorts of things. So the layout is just like a really good drawing to look at to get an overall orientation of the project. And then it'll also have these cuts in it. So it'll have little cuts that say D or A, and that refers to a section view. And typically under that, there'll be an annotation with another number. And this number will be the, the drawing number that the section view's on. So then you can go and look at that section view to understand that information in more detail. So you can see on the example drawing shown on the screen that section D refers to a drawing number and then it says that it gives you a cut of section D showing the two levels of the slab. Now this would be information that's impossible to see from the plan view, but you can see if you look at the section view, which is a cut of the 3D model or the cut of the 3D structure, that you can see that it's a slab stepped down into two levels with a wall. So if you look at the plan view, then you've got to note which section views give you more relevant information. Next, we've got schematics or symbols. So this is more typical for electrical, mechanical, or plumbing drawings that they'll show you a layout 
over say like a electrical single line diagram or a hydraulics drawing and then there'll be a set of symbols that show what each item represents so if you look at this, this is an example of a plumbing drawing you've got a schematic showing how all the pipe work interconnects and then a symbol to represent what each of the different mechanical items is. Next, we've got schedules. So schedules are a good way of summarizing a lot of information into a small table. So for example, we've got a footing schedule on one drawing, which there's an annotation for each different type of footing. So maybe on the plan view, that will show you all the foundations. That will say F1, F2, F3, F4. Then you can go look at the schedule and it says F1 is a 2500 by 2000 by 900 deep footing with two layers of steel reinforcement. So rather than having to do a single drawing for every footing, they simply summarize, they'll have a layout drawing with all the different types of footings, and you can go to the footing schedule to understand in more detail what each footing is. Similarly, with a landscaping design, got a hardscape schedule, which has the different codes. So they might have a plan view that shows all of these different symbols. And then against that, they'll have exactly what the product they're referring to is. So schedules are a really good way of interpreting a lot of design information. Specifications often supplement design packages. So you might have an earthworks design package that shows profiles and cut and fill diagrams, but then it refers to an earthworks specification. And this provides more clarification of the design requirements and how things have to be built. And it's more important when you're understanding quality assurance and tolerances and the construction methodology. When you're doing a quantity takeoff, typically specifications won't be as applicable. It's much more about the actual drawings and understanding the different volumes and measurements. And in some instances, schedules won't be shown on the drawings, but they'll also be in the attached specifications or as a separate document. So they might, for an architectural project, for example, they might list all the products they're proposing to use in the architectural schedule. And so this can be useful when interpreting and understanding the design requirements. They might say wall type one is used, but then you go into the architectural schedule and they say wall type one is made up of brick with a certain color paint and so they're just another good way of interpreting in summarizing design information and then finally when a design is produced typically the architect or engineer will produce a design report a design report is a document that explains how they develop the design and they discuss the design rationale and the basis of design the key decisions they made how they engage stakeholders and also safety and design. And this is a really good document to go to, particularly if you're trying to do a quantity takeoff at the early stages of a project when there's still insufficient design information. You can use it to fill in gaps by understanding the design rationale. But often when you're doing a quantity takeoff, you probably won't need to look at the design reports, but it's still useful to understand what they are. And then finally, the last bit of design documentation needed to understand are 3D models. For typically complicated structures like buildings, tunnels, underground train stations, or complex mechanical and electrical processing plants, more and more you're seeing 3D models being created. And this is because they're just too complicated to look at on a set of drawings and plans. You'd end up with hundreds of different section views showing how everything goes. So pipe work doesn't clash with cable tray which doesn't clash with the hvac and so 3d models are used to basically detect clashes and detailed every turn every orientation every wall penetrate penetration to show that all these different services can actually be built and fit into the space and so if you're working on a project like a building or a train station or something with a lot of services and clashes then you're going to need to be able to look at and use a 3d model to complete your quantity takeoff so typical examples of 3d representation will be with software like revisto or navisworks so depending on the type of project you'll be working on you'll need to understand how to use these models to complete your quantity takeoff